you guys thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is leah and let's recap and review real housewives of beverly hills this is season 12 episode i want to say 14 but y'all know i be getting that mixed up so lisa full of it <laughs> Lisa Renner is full of it and we gonna talk about it. So let's get into okay, it. Okay, y'all. So y'all know I'm still going over names about what I'm gonna call this. Y'all know we talk about the spiciness on the timeline. Maybe spicy timeline. Maybe that one. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I'm still like, when I tell y'all, I have like a, like at least like four, maybe like six or seven names that I keep going back and forth to call this segment before the videos. But it's whatever we let's get into it so the only thing that got like people really talking and really got the people going was kathy hilton and crystal on watch what happens live kathy hilton mistaken um lizzo for either precious lee the fashion model or well and precious lee is a plus size fashion model beautiful or gabby sidibe the um actress so they're playing this game like does kathy know or who does kathy know because kathy can't get nobody right which i feel like is a farce and she faking it like when mary cosby does kooky things you believe it when kathy hilton does it i feel like she putting on just to put on just to have a character but she called Lizzo precious. And I got a little people hiding in their chest and in their feelings. So I'm going to play the audio for y'all. And then we'll talk about it. Lady. Yes. I feel so like I do, precious. No. <laughs> that's not I don't know her. Oh, my God. Uh, that is Lizzo. She is precious, though. Lizzo's precious. precious. That's like what I call her. Lizzo uh, is her precious. Her is precious to me. Yes. <laughs> no, Lizzo is precious. Uh, okay. Will Kathy know this man? <laughs> Lady. Okay, y'all. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm gonna keep it a buck. I laughed. I laughed. I, I, I hit that. Ooh! Like that. Like, girl, what? I hit that. I chuckled. And... Two things I, I feel like the conversation is going online because there are some people who are really upset and I'm not going to take anything away from anybody who is upset by her like calling Lizzo precious because there's negative connotations with that. But I feel like those people also need to unpack that as well. They really do. They really do. Because there's two things with this conversation. Two things. One, I see it as this. Kathy is a rich old white lady who lives in her own bubble, in her own, like, in her own gated community. That it's kind of like, maybe she really don't know who Lizzo is. Maybe she's heard Lizzo's music. And I often think about the Kiki Palmer situation. Where Kiki Palmer didn't even know who Dick Cheney was. But, like, I bet you she knows who Dick Cheney is. But if you put a picture of him, you're not gonna know. I was Kiki in that moment. I know who Dick Cheney is. I learned about Dick Cheney in, in like in college and in um, undergrad. But if you put a picture of Dick Cheney in front of me, I ain't gonna know who that white man is. I am not gonna know who that white man is. That's why it hit. It was funny when she said, "Sorry to this man. I don't know who he is." I was very much her. So I think that's what happened with Kathy. But I understand the optics of it not looking where that is. This old rich white lady that lives in Hollywood or lives in you know the upper echelon, and it's like, how do you not know this rising star, Liz? who has broke into Hollywood who's broke into the entertainment industry why wouldn't you know of her but yeah I think there's things to unpack with that conversation because one some people were like well maybe she thought Lizzo was Precious Lee the um this really beautiful plus size model I follow her on Instagram and then other people are like no she thought Lizzo was Gabby Sidibe from her the movie Precious and I'm like are you mad that she got called Precious because you have a negative connotation when it comes to Gabby Sidibe who is a beautiful plus size black woman but she is very dark skinned very dark skin and it's like why do you why are you mad because i think a lot of people who a lot of people who are part of my community who are mad about this misrepresentation or this misnaming of who she is it's like y'all might need to unpack that unpack that conversation because to me as someone who's been referred to as precious a lot of times in arguments online and it and I'm like it don't hit the way y'all think it hits because I don't find Gabby Sidibe unattractive. I don't. 
<laughs> okay, I actually think she is a beautiful lady in her own right. And I actually am. I admire the way she moves through life where she knows that she doesn't fit the beauty standards. But hell, she living her best life. She's married. She's still acting. She was just an American Horror Story. Um, story. Is it Stories? And she had a good episode. So it's like, she's still doing her thing. She's still doing her thing. So it's just kind of like calling somebody precious don't hit the way y'all think it hits because it just shows that you think that she's ugly and you're just like, it don't hit. If I don't think she ugly, calling me that don't hit the way y'all think it hit. It really don't. I'd be like, all right, bitch, I'm precious. Okay. <laughs> Cause I am, I am precious. All right. But yeah, I thought it was a, was a little key key moment, but I do understand people's frustrations with it. But for some of y'all, you need to unpack your anti-blackness and low key, high key colorism that you have with that whole sentiment. But let's move on to the review. And like I said, Lisa done lost her mind. All right, y'all. So the episode opens up and we're at the dentist. I got a gripe to pick with Bravo. How dare you show me that man in 4K? with them jacked up teeth, his before and after picture. First of all, we all can tell he got new teeth. We can tell, we can tell. I, I, I ain't need to see that. And shout out to all my dentists because I don't even know how you do it because I can't take spit. I can't, uh, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I just, I can't. So shout out to y'all. Y'all know what, y'all doing the Lord's work. Y'all really are doing the Lord's work. Um, I just, I, ugh. And I was wondering why we were there. Uh, it's just that picture just looked like PK didn't br like brush a brush a brush a. Okay. This just reminded me of Grease, y'all. Shout out to Olivia Newton-John. Shout out to Olivia Newton-John. That hurt my heart when I found out that lady passed away this week. That really hurt. Because y'all don't understand, like, Grease is one of my favorite musicals. Like, it really is. It goes, like, well, I won't say it goes because that's not the order. But for me, Grease, The Wiz, Hairspray, the remake and the original, Wicked, and um, West Side Story. Like, when I tell y'all, and I'm not even, I'm look, if West Side Story, Mambo, I'm Mamboing when that come on. Let's go. <laughs> I'm Mamboing when that come on. If Hairspray come on, I'm mashed potatoing. I'm singing the nice guy in town with the black ones. Okay, not with the white people who took that song from them people showing the cultural appropriation them stealing from us. Okay, I'm from the nice sky in town. I'm, I'm singing it. I'm singing. I'm easing on down that road. Ease on down. Ease on down the road. I'm with Michael and Diana Ross. I am with Michael and Diana. Okay. Whew. And I want to be popular when the winds come out. Okay. I'm. I'm, I'm singing Defying Gravity. I am singing Defying Gravity. So like I just, and then I got chills all over my body. They're multiplying and I'm losing control. Like y'all don't understand, like Leah love a good musical. <laughs> I was one of them high school musical kids. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not even, when it came out, what time it is? <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't. Oh, I just, oh, that hurt my heart. That hurt my heart. But that, but that's not why we here. But yeah, PK and them teeth, I didn't need to see that. But basically, we're at the dentist's office because Dorit is asking their dentist, would he like to be a part of her doing an event, um, showcasing, what's it called? Shedding light on a charity called Homeless Not Toothless, which is a disrespectful name, and I would never want to be a part of that. Because honestly, I feel like they were really like, oh yeah, y'all, this is gonna be cute. Homeless, not toothless. <laughs> Get it? No, if I'm homeless, I don't give two shit diggities as my daddy would say about my teeth being, the I'm trying to make sure I got a place to stay, food in my stomach, and I'm worried about someone trying to shank me or assault me while I'm sleeping underneath the tent. I don't give a, about my teeth. I was like, who thought this name was cute? Only like the 1% and like uber wealthy would think this was a cute name. And it's not. It's mad disrespectful. And I I could, I would not. That's embarrassing. Are you not embarrassed? Are you not embarrassed? That's an embarrassing. There's so many other names that this charity could have been. What about like happy mouth? No, that sounds sexual. Beautiful mouth or like beautiful teeth or like healthy smile. Something. I, uh, I just, uh, no, no. But the dentist said, dentist man said he coming. 
So he coming. Next, we see Sutton and Crystal film a scene where they show up to Crystal's, not they show up to Sutton's a boutique. Side note, I really like Sutton's assistant. He is so sarcastic and I dig it. When he told her, you have a keychain, put your key on the keychain, I giggled. I giggled. So I like him. I like sarcastic people. So Crystal stops by and they sit down. Basically, um, Crystal has been caught up on everything that was went on at Lisa Renna's uh, wine tasting. We know Crystal had the Rona, so she's still kind of feeling tired and sluggish. But they talk about it. They're basically saying, like, um, Crystal was like, you know, Renna told me what happened. They, she also told me that they talked about my eating disorder and that you two had a moment. And... A crystal tell asks a sudden, do you think you and Renna could like fix it? And I was actually happy that Sutton said, no, it's on Renna this time because it is on Renna because Renna apologized, like not apologize, Renna accepted Sutton's apology when they were having that one-on-one -on -one dinner, but then got in front of the group and wanted to jump stupid and start getting mad for no reason. And it's like, Renna. What was the point of, like, so th this is my thing. And if you've been on my channel, but, like, shout, shout out to, because I got new subscribers. So, welcome. What's up? My, I always tell people, you don't have to accept people's apology if you don't want to. As well as you don't have to say sorry if you don't feel it. Because that's what my mom always says. Don't apologize to someone because that's one less thing you got to answer to the Lord for when it comes your time. Because you lied because you didn't mean it. So, I'm really of the belief, like, you don't apologize to people unless you're sincere about it. As well as, like, you can accept someone's apology, but that doesn't mean that, like, the person is over which, what happened. So Lisa Rinna could have accepted Sutton's apology, but like once you accept that apology, that doesn't mean that those hurt feelings don't go, go away, but that means that you accept it and you're going to move forward. That's what that means. That's totally what that means. You didn't like, so what was the point of accepting the apology, Rinna, if you were still gonna act stupid when you got in front of the group? And I was happy Sutton said that's on her. Cause honestly, the thing about it is, they don't like the fact that Sutton isn't following what they created on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Y'all, when Real Housewives of Beverly Hills first came out, it it slapped. It was to me, it was on the same level as Real Housewives of Atlanta. They were both really good franchises. We have iconic moments from them. But once the the girls clicked up, especially, yeah, once the girls clicked up, they started to give us manufactured BS where they didn't want to showcase the real. And the issue is Sutton isn't a part of that clique, so Sutton doesn't follow that rule. As well as Sutton, they don't like the fact that Sutton is thriving in LA and she doesn't fit the LA aesthetic. Sutton does, I ain't gonna lie, y'all not love me some Sutton, but Sutton does look a little old for her age. She is not LA 50. She is South Carolina, no, she's Georgia, Georgia 50. Okay, she's, she the South 50. As someone who lives in the South, she a South 50, okay? She is. And what's annoying to me, like very annoying to me, is that they don't like the fact that Sutton doesn't fit the demographic, like not the demographic, she doesn't fit their aesthetic, but she's still thriving and that bothers them. They also felt like they could punk Sutton and Sutton is very much like, no, I'm going to do me. Although I need her to stop apologizing and saying that she can take abuse because it's, it's not cute, ma'am. It's not, and you don't have to take it. But sh that's why they, re they really just don't like her for those reasons. So as S Crystal and Sutton are having this conversation, Sutton brings up the fact that, you know, the conversation about your eating disorder wasn't the way you thought it is, like the way you think it is, Crystal. Like they weren't really being supportive. They were judging and Crystal kind of is like, what do you mean? And she even tears up during the conversation. And I have to fall Crystal a little bit as well as give the ladies some heat. For Crystal, one, these women are not your friends like that. So to expect them to treat what you're going through with care, that's your fault. You've already said previous times that you feel like your feelings aren't valid in this group. So why would you share something so personal to you that you're going through with this group? And think that they would give you some like some grace or some zip, like something like that. So I have to look at Crystal like you were thinking that because you threw that out there, they would like I guess care for you, but they show they they showed you they don't care. They really did, as well as 
it's just kind of like, why would you, I don't, I don't know. I just, for me, Crystal's not stupid, but sometimes Crystal acts stupid. And I think Crystal acts stupid because Crystal really does give me, I'm still a little girl in high school or in middle school that is vying for the popular girl's attention. So if I'm vulnerable or if I let them in and they really get to know me, they're going to accept me. And it's like, no, ma'am, you're dealing with 50 year old hags who like to be bitches. At this point, you should have figured that out by now. So that part, Crystal needs to deal with that. For the other ladies, I get where they're coming from, but it's not their place. It really isn't. Crystal should have, like, the issue is with Crystal sharing that she has this eating disorder and then you're in a group full of women who've had eating disorders or who have children that have eating disorders that have seemingly been somewhat healed from them, they're looking at you like, why aren't you getting help when you have the means to get help? And she even said that. She was like, I know I have the means, but this is a lifelong thing. And it is. It is. It is. People who have eating disorders can be easily triggered by things. And that's like, I'm not shading that in any way. But it's like, you have the resources and they're looking at you like, well, why would you share that you have this eating disorder, but you're not getting help? It doesn't vibe well in your favor. But I do think it's not the women's place to talk negatively or to put their judgments onto such a situation when it's like, y'all have been there too. So at one point you were a crystal where you were sharing with people what you were going through and you weren't actively seeking help. So for you to sit back and be so critical of it, it's like, that's not like, how dare you? That's not your place. Because it really isn't their place. But I also feel like, Crystal, you shouldn't have shared if you weren't going to actively get help. Like, at least on Real Housewives of New Jersey, we saw Jackie getting help. We saw Jackie going to therapy. We saw Jackie pushing herself a little bit to... And being realistic. Like, we saw her push... Like, throwing away her measuring cups eating ice cream with her kids, you know, going to therapy. So it's like nobody really had anything negative to say about that because it's like, oh, we see you getting help and you because you shared that with us. With Crystal, it's like you're not getting help, but you're still talking about it. And I feel like the ladies are like, well, what was the point of sharing it? Again, I don't think it was their place. I don't. I don't think it's anybody's place to judge somebody Especially when you've had it already, so you've been at that level where you're not ready to really deal with what it is going on with you. You just want to share and make people aware of it. But I also think Crystal should have never shared this information with a group of ladies that you've already said. You feel like don't take your feelings into consideration and are always questioning your vulnerability. That's just me. On to the next uh, so scene. We got this scene of Asher playing the piano. Screamed hollered cackled I was like what he didn't sound bad but it was just hella corny hella hella corny it was just corny bro it was just so corny and the reason why it was corny because I know it was just staged you got <laughs> Diana walking down the steps like she sued from from glee like in her track suit that's all that lady owns is track suits look at her lizard lips Walking down the steps, just like, oh, it's so beautiful. And I'm like, girl, bye. Then you got, they sit out and they're eating. And y'all know I don't like Diana. I don't. I think that lady is, something in her spirit ain't right. But in this moment, I I did feel happy for her that she said she was happy that she was able to pick up her daughter. We know she had that really bad miscarriage. And then, and, and, then, then she gets the Rona Back to back, her body had to be, she just had to be feeling like death on earth, really. So I, I was happy when she was just like, you know, I'm happy that I can pick her up again, their daughter. Then him saying, you know, I had to grow up fast or he grew up fast after the um, miscarriage. And I mean, like those kind of things do make people grow up fast. They do. But he still looked like her, her assistant. Asher does not look like Diana's husband, her fiance, her boyfriend. He looks like her son's friend and he's a house guest. Like they don't even have any sexual chemistry. Y'all are just two friends that decided to have a baby. So I just, I just, I can't, I, can't, I don't see no love between them. I just, I don't feel it. 
But let's move on from them. So then we have this scene of Erica and Kyle getting stretched out. Um, Erica says she enjoys pain. She leans into it. Okay, whatever. Um, and then they have this sit down where... Um, and then that's the thing. Kyle tried to blame her always doing splits on her. Like, she has this disorder that I guess makes her very flexible, but also, like, I guess makes her sore at the same time. And I'm looking at her like, that's not a reason why you doing splits. And, and like that man said, mopping the floor with your vagina. <laughs> ah! I was like, okay, Kyle. Okay, ma'am. Okay. But... Kyle and Erica have this sit down. They bring up Erica and this man that supposedly is older than her, but not as old as Tom, that's been blowing her back out. And y'all, honestly, I don't know if this man exists. I feel like he don't, or he does exist, and what he doing ain't as great as she say he doing, because I'm constantly talking about it, it annoys me. As well as, if we ever see this man, and he look like Smeagol, or that bald-headed thing that people do TikToks with that's in the red that's just doing this. <laughs> like, if he, if he look like I'm a loser. Because <laughs> I'm like, I feel like this man is not attractive. I do. And I, the reason why, because I feel like if he was, Erica, I don't know. I feel like Erica, you know what it is? This is what it is. Erica could be getting her, you know, her back blown out. But I feel like she does what a lot of women do. Especially, like, well, I'll say us women do, where it's like, he's ugly, but I'm going to keep telling y'all he's doing this that's great. Like, oh, he has a lot of money. He's really sweet, you guys. Like, he's good in bed. Because that's like, you feel in your mind, that's like, you're like, okay, that up that trumps the ugliness or the unattractiveness. Because I feel like that's what she's doing. Because we don't need to know every fit six and seven minutes or, like, every ten seconds that, like, yo... You know, I'm just having great sex. I'm having great sex. I'm having great sex. Okay, keep it to yourself. But they didn't talk about Garcelle. Kyle brings up how Garcelle is trying to label Erica as an alcoholic. The same lady who told thousands and millions of people that her sister was an alcoholic on live TV is now talking about how she don't want to label people. Shut up, Kyle. Shut up. And my thing is, I'm kind of with Erica. Garcelle isn't probably coming from a good place or a concerning place. But who cares? You cussed out her child. You cussed out her baby. You lucky, lucky hands weren't put on you. I, you, you just need to eat this about you being an alcoholic. As well as, let's not act like you didn't bring and feed into this narrative. You have been a Lushy McLuxton since episode one, gleefully telling people that you've been mixing pills and alcohol. And now that someone's looking at you like, oh, she, she, a, <laughs> she a drunk. She a drunk. Now it's a problem. Girl, go sit down. Go sit. Like, I'm looking at Erica when she was in her confessional. She was like, I hate where I live. I hate being in this house. I hate everything. But I'm just getting through it. I'm making a way. Okay, and life? Life? You was with a crooked man. And now they looking at you like you crooked too. So I calm down, sis. Take it down a couple of notches. As well as I'm just like... You fed into this narrative. If you didn't want people to look at you like, oh, you's an alky. You's, you's a drunk. Then you wouldn't have had these moments where you're saying, oh, I came home, I blacked out. I ordered Taco Bell and I don't remember ordering Taco Bell. As well as I hit my head. I did this. I told, I cut somebody's child out. I, I'm saying all these disrespectful things, but I'm blaming it on the alcohol and the pills. You did this. You, nobody else. So eat this. Eat it, Erica. Eat it. So, what's the next, y'all? Oh, Dorit's party. Dorit's having the event, like I said, the stupid event. Of, well, I don't call it a stupid charity, but the stupid name. Toothless, not, no, homeless, not toothless. And everyone's coming over. Dorit looked beautiful in that um, Cavalli dress, big hair. She looked amazing. PK actually did look good as well. Um, I think they did a beautiful... Um, the table was beautiful. The decorations were nice, especially on the table. But everyone comes except Cherie because we found out she got the vid too. But all the original cast is there. So Kathy is there. Um, Kathy, Crystal, Sutton, Garcelle, Rena, 
um, Diana and what's his name? Um, same girl, Diana. Oh, and Lisa is there. Uh, the theme was gold and black. Diana walked in in baked potato wrapping. That's all I saw. She was talking about she looked like gold. No, she looked like a baked potato. That a gold or a like or the gold thing they put over ham when you're baking it in the oven. Erica had on her hooker shoes, which she was so glad, like glad to tell people. I said, okay, sis. That outfit wasn't outfitting as well as them shoes looked too small because your toes was hanging over them. Um, you know, it was cute for what it was. It, you know, it was cute for what it was. I thought it was interesting, though, that this one guy who I guess is the CEO. So this this white man. I knew it had to be that for me. Who made, um, who is the CEO of Homeless Not Toothless, Mr. Um, Dr. John Grossman, Grossman or whatever. Um, not John, J. Grossman. He is the one who created the organization. His story was interesting that he found out he had like nine or six kids that like he did a 23andMe and found out that like six people came to him and that he was like, they were his kids. And it was all because he used to donate sperm. <laughs> and he found out that, I said, how much sperm was you donating where you got like six kids out there? Because I think he said he has nine kids. Six kids out there, bro. <laughs> like, I would never if I was a dude. Because I don't need people popping up on me like, you're my daddy. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. But we didn't have this conversation with PK talking with Erica and them. And he's talking about the DUI. We found out that he went to go see Lionel Richie open um, in Las Vegas and that's where he got, um, booked for and stuff. And basically he got drunk. The police officer pulled him over. They were like, where are you coming from? He said dinner. He was like, who'd you have dinner with? He said Lionel Richie and, um, uh, John Legend. And basically he said, you know, I realized like, even though when you think you good, you may not be good. And Erica's like, oh, okay. I'm like, Ugh. Erica's so fake to me now. Um, but everyone's there. Everyone's happy. It was cute. We did sit at the table for the debacle of all debacles. And I'm really about to get in Lisa Renna. I'm really about to get in to Lisa Renna and Kyle right now. So I'm about get to get into Kyle and Lisa because they're sitting down at this charity event. Um, everyone's there. The vibe is there, are vibing. Everyone's laughing, talking. Garcelle has a cute moment with the, um, the dentist from before where when she ex um, explains to them like, oh... I like, you know, I have two younger sons as well as an older son and how like he's like, he's third. I think she said he's like 31 or something. He said, what? And Garcelle's like, yeah. And I ain't had no Botox. I said, oh, come on. And he said, you know that? Cause why? Cause black don't crack. It was a cute moment. Cause it don't, it don't. So it was like a sweet moment. And so then, um, Kyle starts to ask around the table about what happened at Lisa Renna's party. Lisa Renna lied to Kyle, blatantly lied. Where they, they were both getting ready for the um for the party and they flash back to when Garcia not Garcia when Erica and Kyle were sitting down when they were having a discussion about Erica's drinking and the, the guy she's dating. And um Erica yeah, said, Oh, Lisa told Sutton to get the F out of her house. And she was like, Did Sutton leave? And uh, Erica's like, No. And they laughed about it. So then when Kyle was getting ready, she FaceTimes Erica, not Erica, FaceTimes Lisa. And they're talking about it. She was like, Girl, did you tell Sutton to get the F out? And Lisa blatantly lies and is like, No, I just told her to get out because she was saying things I didn't want her to say. So I said, If you're going to be like that, you can leave. And I'm like, no, you told that lady to get the F out. And then you told her, said, if you come for my family, my kids, or whatever, I will take you down. You did all of that. You did that. So what are we talking about, Lisa? Are you you not remembering? Like, what is it? What's going on, sis? So Kyle asked Sutton and Garcelle. And Sutton and Garcelle are sitting next to each other. And um, so Kyle's like, did Eric, Kyle said, well, I heard what happened at Lisa's party. Like, Erica told me. And she said... Um, Erica, she was like, well, did Lisa tell you to get the F out of her house? And Sutton said, yes, she did. And Garcelle said, yeah, she did tell her to get the F out. And she said, hold on, hold on, hold on. She didn't tell me, she didn't say that to me. She didn't say that to me. She said she told you to get out. Like, she said you can leave. And they're both looking at her like, no. And Sutton even was like, well, we're at this event. There's other people here. Basically saying there's other people who are not a part of this show that are here. Let's be respectful and not bring them into this drama. So then 
Kyle being messy. And I mean, I get it. Kyle's, Kyle self-produces. She ghost produces the show. So she's getting the things going. And I can't fault her for that. But I was like, girl, this is not the time or the place. So then she asks, um, she goes down the table and she asks, um, asks Dorit, like, did Lisa Renner t- really tell Sutton to get the F out? And she's like, yes, she did. <laughs> like, Dorit's like, yes, she did. I forgot to talk about this. But y'all, y'all know the streets on Reddit is saying that there's something going on with Dorit and um, Mauricio. And the way Mauricio was saying that he would pick Dorit out of all the ladies if he didn't have to pick his wife as being the most prettiest, like, dressed up that night. I said, Mauricio. I mean, Dorit is beautiful. But I'm like, Mauricio, don't do it. Don't do it. They would actually make a cute couple. Even though that is wrong on so many levels, they would actually make a very cute couple. They really would. But, and the only reason why they got on this topic of conversation is because, um, Kyle, not Kyle, PK and Mauricio were looking at the ladies while they were talking and they were saying like, oh, who looks the nicest? And, um, Mauricio said, oh, my wife. And, PK was like, if you didn't have to pick our wives or your wives, who would you pick? And he, PK said, Dorit, that quick. He said, Dorit. I said, oh. I said, PK, you said, not PK. Mauricio said that too quick. And you know, on the, on, on the Reddit streets, they, they keep saying that y'all got a thing going on. That's the alleged T. I said, you better stop it. You better stop it. And the way that they're, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's such a mess. So... You can clearly see Sutton is upset because Sutton is like, I said I didn't want to have this conversation. So why are we having this conversation, especially at this event? And I'm just like, yeah, she said she don't want to have the conversation. So why are we having this conversation? So then Kyle asks Lisa, like, Lisa, everybody is telling me you told her to get the F out. And Lisa's like, I didn't say that. And Sutton's like, yeah, you did. Everyone's at the table like, Lisa, yeah, you did. She said, no, I said you can gladly, like, leave or, like, if you don't want to. And Sutton says, no, you told me to you told me to get the F out because I said you were talking about both sides of your mouth. And she was like, well, yeah, of course I'd be upset with you saying that after what happened. You know what, really? And then she goes, then Lisa just gets really angry. And then you hear Garcelle being like, y'all, it's people here. We don't even need to bring them into this drama. It's a charity event. And then Lisa's like, when I said, uh, no, I probably did say you can get the beep out. You know what really bothered me is that you didn't apologize to Harry. And Sutton's like, no, I did. I sent Harry a a sincere text. And then we have Sutton reading the text in the confessional where she's like, no, I apologize to him. And it is what it is. And I'm just like, Lisa, girl. So then Lisa's like, you need to unpack why you wanted to hurt me. I'm like, Lisa, not if, like, you're acting like you didn't try to hurt a lot of people since you've been on this show. You did it to Yolanda, and I didn't even like Yolanda like that. You did it to Kim Richards, and Kim Richards ate you up. You did it to Denise. So I'm like, you haven't, and you've done it to Garcelle. You've intentionally tried to hurt a lot of people. So now that someone intentionally intentionally tries to hurt you now it's an issue and she was like you need to apologize and accept what you did to me i have told lisa you and them bloated balloon lips better calm it down because this is not the time see Sutton need me on here because <laughs> i wouldn't the way i would have ate lisa up because i have told lisa i don't give a flying you know what you told me to get the F out your house because you was mad because I clocked you. Because I because you did. That's the thing. Lisa is just mad that she got embarrassed. And she got embarrassed to the point where receipts were produced on her. And it made it even more real that, like, you only show up to these charity events just for a photo op. Because the people from the actual charity said you didn't donate. And you did it. You just mad you, you got caught up. See, that's why you don't play with people. You don't play because you never know what people got in their pocket for you. You never know what people got in their pocket for you. So then they stop. Like, they stop because PK special guest comes and it is Melissa Edgehart. I've seen this lady and I've probably heard her song because the song that she was singing, I've heard in movies. But at first, if, if, if she didn't play that song, I wouldn't have known who she was. <laughs> Kathy didn't even know who she was, but I've heard her music. So I was like, oh, that's her. And I feel like I've seen her 
on like I've seen her in TV shows as well. So I was like, oh, I know who that is. I just didn't know her name. But she sang beautifully. She really did. And I was like, I know she probably was sitting in the background like, if they don't shut up when I get on this stage. Because <laughs> I said, y'all better respect this a Grammy war with an artist. Y'all better respect that lady. So then they come sit back down after everybody's excited, after her performing, thanking her. Lisa's like, I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to fight anymore. You know, you guys, I just got my mom's stuff. And I don't want to fight me. I call BS on this. I really do. I really do. The truth of the matter is, Lisa got embarrassed. Again, because you can't tell me that someone didn't pull her aside and been like, girl. She did apologize to Harry. Maybe she texted him and Harry texted her back and was like, yeah, I got a text from her or something. But Lisa looks stupid. Lisa constantly is arguing with Sutton about something that she's not going to win. So now she's copping to like, oh, I'm sad because of my mom. She was crying, but no tears were coming out. And I'm not saying that this isn't serious. Like, I'm not. I'm not. Like, as someone who recently lost somebody very significant in their lives, I, I know what that feels like. But for me, it's like... To cop to that and be like, this is why I'm so angry with Sutton. No, you need to unpack that. And just because your mom passed away doesn't give you the like allowance to be a total dick to people because you're angry and you're hurt. I, I know there's stages of grief. We know it's denial, anger, and all that sadness, acceptance, and all that stuff. But that does not give you a path for being nasty to people when people have not been nasty to you. You started this by trying to be disrespectful to Garcelle. Kyle, you and Kyle, where y'all were trying to act like Garcelle dined and dashed when it came to the charity event Kyle was throwing. So Sutton basically, no, not even the charity. It was, you were mad that, Garcelle didn't thank you or thank Harry for his sauce for hosting her um the birthday at your rat infested home where the bubonic plague and the black death just running around and the hunter virus because I think hunter virus you get from from rats but you know because she didn't thank you. And Sutton was having her friends back. And I'm just like, you're just mad that you tried to clock. Garcelle and then you got clock clocked back by somebody you didn't think it was gonna come from and now you can't handle it I'm sick of Lisa I'm sick of Lisa and at this point them tears really didn't move me nor did they mean anything to me I do feel sorry about like her mom passing away because I know that has to be hard I, I could not fathom not having my mom in this world but to use that as a reason why it's okay for you to have your bad behavior is straight up disrespectful to the legacy and the representation like the legacy your mom has left like I Lois wasn't with the shits like that she really wasn't she was seemed like a sweet lady who was just wanting to live life and have a good time you just out here just being nasty and like a lot of people have been saying it might be time for you to be put on pause like Dorinda maybe you need to sit out a season regroup and refresh and then come that back it, and know that is all remember to be bravely authentic and drop down in them comments below Deuces.